This is the Rad Power Bikes Rad Expand 5 Plus. In this comprehensive review, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know before you make your purchase. First, we'll dive into all the components. Then we'll get into some first person riding footage, see how the bike performs. We'll get up to that 20 miles per hour. We'll see what this bike can do. And finally, some third person riding footage where I'll give you the pros and cons of this folding electric bike. But first, let's take a closer look. Now I did say five plus, so this is an improvement on the Rad Expand 5, that one right there. This is the five plus. Now they might look very similar, but there are actually a lot of changes. Now what are those changes? Front suspension, torque sensor, color LCD display, hydraulic disc brakes, turn signals. I'm getting a little ahead of myself though. Let's talk price and sizing. One of the biggest selling points of this electric bike in my opinion. The Rad Expand 5 Plus is priced at $18.99, though up-to-date pricing can be found in the description below. And if you do decide to make your purchase, that link also helps support content like this for free. So thanks in advance for your support. Now there are two different colors on this electric bike. What you're looking at here is the stone tan, but it's also offered in slate blue. The bike has a max capacity of 315 pounds, 225 pounds for the rider and the standover height this right here is 16 and a half inches. Now, while the bike is accessible, be mindful of the weight, 72 and a half pounds with the battery installed. Taking it out will drop that down to 62 and a half pounds. If you're looking at the entire Rad Power Bikes lineup and you're on the shorter end, this might be the bike for you. Rad Power Bike states riders all the way down to four foot 10 up to five foot 10. I'm going to put it at the minimum insertion point, which is the highest point the seat can go. Keep in mind, I'm six feet tall. So this bike is going to be a little bit too small for me, but I just love the accessibility. We'll step over. I'm close to getting full leg extension, though I would want to put the seat up higher if I could. For those of you unfamiliar, Rad Power Bikes is one of the largest sellers of e-bikes in North America. It's actually the brand that we got started with all the way back in 2018. Of course, they have changed their lineup quite a bit since then. When I first fell in love with our first Rad Power Bike, that prompted me to create the Rad Owners Forum, a community of those who are considering a Rad Power Bike or those who already own. So there is a vast community of Rad Power Bikes owners out there. And Rad Power Bikes also has a two year warranty, which is something you don't see as frequently on electric bikes. With that, let's dive into all the components. I appreciate all the upgrades on the Rad Expand 5 Plus, but a big one for me is the move to hydraulic disc brakes. These are from Gemma. We'll see how they perform in our upcoming first person riding footage. And those are paired with 180 millimeter rotors. We have beefy CST tires. These are 20 inches by four inches wide, certainly capable of off-roading. There's also a reflective sidewall for increased visibility. This is an EX Show 50 millimeter hydraulic suspension. It is not a brand that I'm familiar with, has a preload adjustment on the left side, as well as a lockout on the right. I'll push on it so you can get an idea of what to expect. The front wheel is attached with a bolt-on axle. We have plastic fenders both in the front as well as in the rear. The front light that of course runs off the main battery is 200 lumens. They've done an excellent job with the cable management and it runs internally into the frame. There's the four bolt pattern for mounting accessories. Rad Power Bikes has some awesome accessories. I'd personally recommend adding the front rack with the big basket. And they also have an awesome roll top bag that we use very often. I'll fold the bike towards the end of the walk around, but here's a close up of the latch. Pull the lever and pull out and then the handlebars can fold down. Diving into the cockpit, I mentioned the Gemma hydraulic disc brakes. These are the levers complete with motor cutoffs. Rad Power Bikes continues to use a right hand twist grip throttle. That's gonna be my preference. And they're pairing that with the Shimano seven speed sys index thumb shifter, a component we see on many electric bikes. You also get an included bell. This is a new control pad for Rad Power Bikes. Power button is on the top here and it is a color LCD display. 
Keep in mind, this is different than the new Radster Trail and Radster Road. Those are horizontal displays. We have wattage on the top. That's what's going to the motor. Odometer in the top right. Current battery capacity, as well as remaining range, which changes depending on the pedal assist level you're in. And you can also change this to state of charge, which I'll show you in a second. The lights automatically turn on. Current speed front and center. And of course, pedal assist levels zero all the way up to five. There is a walk mode by holding the pedal assist down button. And you can turn off the lights by holding the pedal assist up button. New with Rad Power Bikes models are the turn signals. That's the button on the left and right here. And you can see an indicator. You will want to turn it off though after you've made your turn. And something new we're starting to see, USB-C charging for your device. And what's nice with the BMX style handlebars is you can shift the display over and you have room for some accessories. Next, let's get into the advanced settings. I'll do that by holding the bottom button on the control pad. Here you can clear the trip, change the class of the bike, top speed going to be 20 miles per hour in either class one or class two, though changing it to class one will disable the throttle. No option for class three on this electric bike. If you're looking for higher speeds, check out the new Radsters. You can change the units. Range, this is where you can change it to the state of charge for percentage instead of remaining range. Brightness for the display and additional information. That's going to show the firmware versions. And that's it for the advanced settings. And here's what it looks like if you change it to percentage. The rear light is brake actuated. And here's a look at the turn signal. There's two bottle cages for mounting the best water bottle cage on the market available at shop.ebikeescape.com. The battery location hasn't changed. It's still a shark style battery. But I'll talk about what they changed in a second. And the components are external, including the controller, which makes it really easy for maintenance, but it's just not as clean of a look. To remove the battery, I'll put the key in. Turning it left one click, that's going to be locked and the bike won't turn on. Push in and turn all the way to the left. Now it's in its unlocked position. I like to use two hands on these shark style batteries, one at the bottom and top. Charger port right here can charge it both on or off the bike. There's LEDs for current capacity and they up the range on these new shark style batteries. 48 volt, 15 amp hours instead of 14. The battery is now UL2271 certified. The entire bike is UL2849. And something new for Rad Power Bikes is their Safe Shield batteries. They have this battery filled with resin and in the event of an accident or a fire, that resin is going to help prevent the fire moving from one cell to the next. And that's a feature we haven't yet seen from other brands. I also really like the ability to access the fuses on the bottom of this battery. And for additional protection, might I recommend our flame resistant and waterproof battery bag. This is the size large. It's a roll top bag and it's great for taking the battery with you on your travels. Rad Power Bikes notes a range between 20 and 60 miles, of which seems accurate. Putting the battery back on, line it up, push down, and don't forget to use the keys and turn it all the way to the right position so the bike turns on. Of course, you get an included charger and this is their new one with the orange cable. It's a two amp charger and what's cool is it comes with a mount so you can mount this to your wall and slide the charger in. So it looks like this. And of course, you also get some basic tools. Included pedals are plastic Welgo pedals, though they are folding. Kickstand located towards the rear, so no chance of the pedals coming in contact with it. Gemma hydraulic disc brake in the rear. And there is a torque arm to help keep the wheel where it's supposed to be. The rear rack is included and has a 59 pound capacity, has some pannier hangers. And again, Rad Power Bikes accessories are awesome. You could mount a small or large basket back here. The saddle is branded Rad Power Bikes, has a handle on it though is a more sleek style saddle. If you're looking for more premium comfort though, I recommend our suspension seat post and we have in stock the one that fits the Rad Expand 5 Plus. And trust me, it is a game changer. This is a 750 watt motor with 64 newton meters of torque. We'll see how it handles our hill climb test. We have a Shimano Altus derailleur, so common on many of these electric bikes. Again, seven speeds. And in the rear, 14 to 32 teeth. And in the front, 48 teeth. And this is a dual sided metal chain ring. Chain stay protector right here. And the cables come out of the frame right here. 
There's a look at the bottom. And here's where the bike folds in half. Let's do that now. For good measure, I'm going to lower the seat post and then we'll fold the pedals, push in, tilt up. I like to put the left pedal on a downward angle. That seems to keep it out of the way. Lift up the lever on the handlebars and pull out. Those will fold down. Push on the spring-loaded lever and pull out. Make sure the lever's out of the way. I did fold this already and it was pretty stiff. We'll see how I do this time. I'm gonna use my leg to brace it and we'll pull the front all the way around. Put the kickstand up. There's a stand underneath the frame right here. Be mindful of the cables that run through the middle of the bike. You don't want to crimp those. This is how the Rad Expand 5 Plus looks folded. With that, let's see how it performs and get into some first person riding footage. Let's get started with the first person riding footage. I did put on the small basket so you can see how that looks. And I am very curious how this torque sensor performs. That's going to be one of the biggest changes in terms of ride feel on this electric bike. Now keep in mind the bike comes shipped as a class two electric bike, which means a top speed of 20 miles per hour whether you're using the throttle or pedaling can change it to class one, which is simply going to disable the throttle. Our first test will be throttle only. Got the GPS speed. This is the speedometer app by Coolnix. And just a note, still access to the throttle in pedal assist level zero. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, throttle only, up to 20. Six, 10, 11, 14, 17, 18, 19, and there's 20, and I am seeing, I saw up to 750 watts or so. 20 miles per hour, can hold it there using about 550 watts, four or 500 watts. And this bike is indeed peaking at 750 watts. Rad Power Bikes, one of the brands that is very much into the accessibility as far as their motors go and how much power they're getting. A lot of times you'll see 750 watt motors on some other electric bikes that are peaking at 12, 1300 watts. Now I do have a full battery and I'll stop here and I'm going to shift all the way down before we get started. I wanna talk a bit about the torque sensor. The torque sensor is going to measure how much power you're putting in and amplify it. That is in comparison to a cadence sensor, which simply determines whether you're pedaling or not, and then gives you an equal amount of power as long as you're pedaling, of course, in the various pedal assist levels, usually one through five. We'll start off in pedal assist level one, and very responsive. I could feel the motor engage pretty much as soon as I started pedaling. Of course, not a lot of power in pedal assist level one, currently using just 40 watts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pedal just super leisurely, just spinning my legs nice and easy because it's hard to talk about a torque sensor and get that across to you. And then after I do the leisurely pedaling, I'll put in a little bit more effort so you can get an idea of what speeds you can expect at each pedal assist level. So right now going at seven miles an hour, I could maybe shift up into second or third gear. Also going to allow me to more easily put effort into the pedals, going about eight or nine, and still using about 30 watts. I put in a little bit more effort here, getting up to 80 watts, creeping up in speed to 11 miles an hour. This is going to be the pedal assist level where you can get more of a workout if you want. You could maybe even shift up to fourth gear, getting up to 12 miles an hour, and it looks like we're not even going to hit 100 watts from the motor, using about 70, 80 watts. Let's go into pedal assist level two. I'm going to shift down into third gear, and now I'm more easily able to hit 10 miles an hour, pedal assist level two. And if I provide just a little bit more power, we're getting closer to 200 watts, 175 or so, and I could shift up to fourth or fifth gear We'll see how high we can get towards that 20 mile per hour top speed. There's 15. I'm gonna shift up to six gear. And I can feel the motor kind of kicking on as I put in just that little bit of extra power. And I wouldn't say I would be winded doing the, this kind of riding style for a long time, but certainly putting in some pressure and cruising at 16 miles an hour. All right, we'll take a right here. Gonna use my right turn signal.
All right, pedal assist level three. I shifted down to second gear. And it doesn't seem like I'm getting a lot more out of the motor. We're still cruising at 10 or 11 miles an hour. I'm gonna shift up to third gear. Again, spinning my legs nice and easily. There's 11 miles an hour. All right, let's give it a little bit more. Fourth gear, fifth gear. Cruising at 14, 15 miles an hour. Using right around 100, 200 watts, just depending. Let's go up to six gear. And we are approaching 17 miles an hour. All right, let's go into pedal assist level four. Third gear. All right, here we go. Now we're getting more consistently 100, 200 watts, just spinning the legs nice and easily. Let's go up to fifth gear. I saw 300 watts, so 13, 14, pedal assist level four. And I imagine I'm going to get pretty close to that 20 miles per hour. All right, getting up to 400 or so watts, sixth gear, let's go to seventh gear. You can really feel the modulation of the motor as I just put in just slightly more effort and there's 20 miles per hour. So it is doable in pedal assist level four. All right, let's slow down. I'm going to pedal assist level five, shift back down. Kind of curious what you can get as far as speed, very leisurely cadence in pedal assist level five. Now we're hitting 200 watts, it's bouncing around 250. but still going about 14, 15 miles an hour. I'm gonna shift up to seventh gear. But if you wanna hit that 20 mile per hour mark, you'll have to put in a little bit more effort, not a significant amount. And there we go, we're already at 20. All right, I'm gonna do a brake test at this road work ahead. We'll test out these Gemma hydraulic disc brakes. All right, locked up the tire just a little bit there. Stopping distance though, very good. Now I will say this will depend on the rider and your personal preference, but at 20 miles per hour, it's maybe just a slightly faster cadence than I'd prefer. So I would have preferred maybe a bigger front chain ring because just to hold the 20 mile per hour speed, you can probably see my legs. It's not incredibly fast. It's not like ghost pedaling or anything, but faster than I'd personally prefer. But the more important question is, how does this motor perform up our hill climb test? Let's get to it and find out. All right, here's our hill climb test. This is the hill that I test out all the electric bikes that I review on the channel. We'll get up to that 20 miles per hour and we'll see what this bike can do. The GoPro makes this hill look so much smaller than it is, so we'll put up a picture as well as the specs. And I did see, starting from the throttle alone, you do see that 750 watts. And even while pedaling and pedals to level five, one hard pedal stroke does get you all 750 watts. As we start the hill here, our speed's going to decrease. We'll see what the minimum speed is. Again, 750 watts, 64 newton meters of torque, down to 15 miles an hour, 14. I did want to talk about the handling of this bike. I already talked about the sizing, how this bike really isn't meant for someone six feet tall, but these handlebars belong on every folding bike in my opinion. They're just so much more comfortable. It's easier to handle. I was able to bring them out a little further. 13 miles an hour according to the GPS. And 
These in particular, being BMX style, we have that flat bar, which is perfect for our cell phone mount. This is the bolt-on one, and it works perfectly, holds your phone very secure, even large phones like mine. And not bad considering this is a 750 watt peak motor, 13 mile per hour minimum speed. But of course, this is an electric bike after all. So I'm going to go back down and we'll see how it performs while pedaling with the torque sensor. All right, here we go, hill climb test while pedaling. I'm going to go into pedal assist level one and I'm going to need to shift all the way down here. Now the big thing with these torque sensors is usually you do have to go in a higher pedal assist level unless you really wanna be winded at the top of a hill. And we'll see if that's the case with this bike. And already the hill has barely started. And in pedal assist level one, first gear, granted we're only getting 77 watts, so it shouldn't be surprising that I'm working really hard to go seven miles an hour. Let's go into pedal assist level two. Uh, wattage jumping up to 200 watts. For me personally, I would still go higher. Let's go in pedal assist level three. Approaching 300 watts. Again, you really need to put in some extra effort though. If I put in a lot of effort, I can get up to 400 watts, but still, my legs are still burning. So pedal assist level four, still in first gear. This would be doable, but still going to be providing a decent bit of effort. We're around 300 watts and I really have to push to get more power out of the motor. So let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level five. Still around 300 watts and second gear. I still have to push on the pedals a decent bit to get more power out of the motor. Now getting 500, 600 watts. So to be honest with you, what I'd probably do is go into a higher gear, still pedal and just use the throttle because it's going to be a little bit easier to get the full power output from the motor without putting in a ton of effort from your legs. Now, some brands have customizability in the display that allows you to really dial in the pedal assist levels, maybe get more power out of the motor with less effort for some of these torque sensor electric bikes. All right, with that, let's get into some third person riding footage I'll give you my concluding thoughts on the Rad Expand 5 Plus. The Rad Expand 5 Plus is a part of Rad's rather large release of four e-bikes in the spring of 2024. It builds on the Rad Expand 5, that's the plus in the name, but also brings back some of the features from the Expand's predecessor, the Rad Mini, namely the front suspension, which is nice to see. At $18.99, this folding e-bike is higher priced than many of the other folding e-bikes, so I thought firstly it would be helpful to talk about the major differentiators, and then those looking to purchase this e-bike can make an informed decision on whether these features are worth it. Probably the biggest thing is the torque sensor. Most often you're going to find cadence sensors on less expensive e-bikes. They're even rare in the sub $2,000 price point period. It provides a more natural riding feel that many people, including myself, prefer. My only complaint about this torque sensor is that it still took a fair bit of effort to get more power out of the motor on steep hills in particular. On flat ground, it felt good. Of course, you have the right hand twist grip throttle at the ready to give you maximum power if you need it up hills. But I do want to emphasize the type of throttle, a lot of companies moving to thumb throttles. And for a 750 watt peak motor, the bike performed well. Next, the resin filled battery. Kind of one of those things that gives you peace of mind, but you could easily forget about it since this looks like a regular old e-bike battery. And the Rad Expand 5 Plus is fully UL certified, so no concerns there. Next, the BMX style handlebars, which I really prefer over the simple, let's call them T-style bars you typically see. The handling is unquestionably superior. The new color display was refreshing to see and the ability to change from class one to two is handy to stay compliant in certain areas. And then there's Rad Power Bikes, the brand. 
one of the largest still in North America, even as they rebuilt from a few challenges, meaning chat support and phone support during normal business hours. And you get a two year warranty, which isn't unheard of, but is still worth mentioning. $1,900 is a lot of money after all. I was happy to see hydraulic disc brakes and while a relatively unknown brand, they still function fine. And you're still getting all the benefits of every folding e-bike portability, it being compact, and just not having to purchase a rack for hauling. Next, key considerations. I would have liked to see either a larger front chain ring or a rear cassette slash freewheel that starts at 11 teeth. This would allow for the rider to control how fast their cadence is at the 20 mile per hour top speed. And speaking of the 20 mile per hour top speed, if you're looking for a class three e-bike, this isn't going to be it. I would have also liked to see some more advanced settings in the display for customization. We are seeing some other brands offer this, namely the ability to change motor power assist percentages to your liking. Design wise, there's nothing groundbreaking here. This is largely the same frame design we saw when the Rad Mini released some four years ago. And honestly, I think that's a good thing. The frame is super accessible with the low standover height and it's the e-bike you should strongly consider if you're under, at, or just above five feet tall. Plus with the four inch tires, it allows you to do a bit of exploring. While you don't get a super clean look with an integrated controller and battery, for some, the ability to easily replace these parts make up for that downside. Remember that if you own or are considering a rad e-bike, you should definitely check out the forum I run at radowners.com. It's an awesome group of enthusiasts. And of course, if you decide to pick up this model or any other model from Rad Power Bikes, there's a link in the description, which is a free and easy way for you to show that you appreciate our work here at eBike Escape. Thanks in advance for your support. Now that you know my thoughts, I want to hear yours down in the comment section. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.